Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week, can you make bread without kneading the dough? Hey, home bakers, welcome back. This week, I want to discuss with you the principle of no knead bread. When you're making bread at home, and this is what I tell people in our classes, the hardest bit of work that you need to do is eight to ten minutes of kneading your dough. Now that is not completely across the board. There's certain breads where the technique is slightly different, but for a straightforward yeasted loaf of bread, you've got to knead the dough in the first place. Now I haven't touched upon this subject, subject for a long time because I never really considered kneading a faff in the first place, it's just eight to 10 minutes going off in your special place in your mind, kneading your dough nicely, you're putting on some music, getting through it, and having a jolly old time with nothing else to do. Some people, however, do consider it a faff to get hands on kneading dough, and there are people out there, if you're watching this video, it might be you, who have trouble in a physical sense with kneading the dough. Maybe you've got dodgy wrists or something, I don't know what it is, but for many reasons, some people like to cut out the kneading stage. Now I did a video a long, long time ago about why we need dough in the first place. It's very, very old. I'll link it up here. Uh, go and watch it if you fancy a nice cringe off at a younger bake with Jack. But in a nutshell, the reason why we need the dough is to develop the gluten. And the gluten is what gives our dough the strength and the structure it needs to be able to hold all that gas and to be able to hold a nice shape. However, there is one more thing that also develops gluten in the bread making process. Do you know what I'm going to say next? You must know what I'm going to say next if you watched any of my videos. The other thing that develops gluten is the magical, the mystical, the wonderful factor, which is time. So theoretically, if you don't want to knead your dough for whatever reason it may be, you can replace that physical energy with time. And there's a couple of ways uh, that you can do this. Some recipes require you to leave it overnight or for 12 or for 16 hours before you go for your final shape up and your proof and your bake. I like to spread it over a couple of hours, maybe two or three hours, and I like to build the structure along the way because I feel like it needs to be done. So you've got your basic ingredients, your flour and your salt in a bowl and your yeast and your water in a jug. You put them all together and mix them up together, right? That's stage number one, the mix, that's it. Then over the course of two to three hours resting, I give it a little stretch and a fold, maybe every half an hour, maybe every 40 minutes, 45 minutes or whatever, whatever fits in with my schedule. Because the nature of the game is, I'm only making no need bread because it fits in with my schedule on the day. I got stuff to do, maybe I'm going to a class and I've already needed two or three doughs that I've pre-prepared for later, and I've got to make another one for our supper. I'll make a no-knead dough and then I'll just stretch it and fold it all the way until we get to the class and eventually bake it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got a malted bread dough here. I'm gonna make a nice loaf with some sunflower seeds on top. It's gonna to be wonderful. But let me talk, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is, I'm not, I've not kneaded this. I'm just doing a little stretch and a fold every once in a while when I remember. And I'll put the recipe on my website so you can have a go as well. Okay, here's my dough. Okay, this isn't the first time I've done a stretch and fold on it. So it's looking like it's coming together a little bit already. I've got a little box of flour, although I probably won't need it. No pun intended, and a Bake With Jack dough scraper. Essential! Right, so first thing to do is, this is what you do every half an hour, 40 minutes, right? Loosen it up around the edge, just like that. Pop that in there. And then all we do is just pick it up by the edge, give it a little pull out, a little stretch out. Oh, crumbs, don't do that. Fold it over in on itself, right? In on itself. You might need a little bit of flour on your fingies, just to help you out, or a bit of water as well. Some people use water instead. Stretch it around and fold it, right? Just build a little bit of tension, right? And all the folds ended up on the top, which means the top is actually the bottom because everything arrives underneath. All the joins and seams go underneath, if that makes sense. Which means the dough is actually upside down in the bowl. I'm gonna make a video about that another time about the top and the bottom because it's really, really important. I feel like I gloss over it a little bit without really explaining it. But all the folds end up here. Then you leave it another half an hour and do exactly the same thing. That's it, by the way, that's it. 
All you do is that every 40 minutes, half an hour or so, something like that across a two hour or three hour period, whatever you have really. And then you go for the final shape, let it prove up and bake it as normal. Not everybody does the stretch and fold thing, but I feel like it needs a little bit of structure building along the way. And it doesn't really take, like, what did that take, like 20 seconds to do a little fold along the way? And that's it really. And there you have it, that's the theory of no knee bread. I hope that made sense. If effectively replacing the hard work uh, with time, but building a little bit of structure along the way because it's nice to do and it makes for better results, in my opinion. I hope that's helped you out anyway. Listen, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Underneath, I'll put the recipe for the bread when it comes out of the oven. I will take a picture of it and make a nice recipe for you to be there for you to have a go at. Also, I wrote a little article about the theory of no need bread a while ago, and I'll stick that underneath if you want to go and read that on my blog. Uh, There's a little bit, just a, maybe a little bit more detail or maybe a little bit clearer than whatever I waffle about on air. Anyway, listen, I'll see you next week. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Have a nice week, and I'll see you on Thursday. See ya.